We have a lot of information to go over today. Six new units, double rearmed banner, some crazy weapons including the first inheritable beast weapon, and engages second new hero's banner. Ivy showed up, so the Brodians are here. On the banner we have Citrine, Diamant, Rearmed Alchris, and our Tempest Trials newbie, Rearmed Aider. It's been about six months since Engage launched, and for whatever reason, we are now getting a free copy of Male Allier. You just need to log into the game before September ends. Allier will be on this month's Mythic banner if you want merges. After that, I believe he will just enter the permanent 5-star pool. He has the same weapon as Dima Allier with similar stats, but I'll still talk about him at the very end. For our sixth unit, we have Lapis. She's an instant demo, and she, on this banner, she is in the 3 to 4 star demo pool. However, we are getting zero free copies, which sucks if you want to use Lapis like I do. Time to pick an RNG god and start praying. I will go over all six unit stats, skills, and playstyles, plus discuss build ideas. This is gonna be a long one. One of Alchris's retainers, Lapis, may not have a unique weapon. But she is one of the fastest units in Engage, so she'll be our free to play Demote Swordmaster option. For stats, 41 HP, 41 attack, 45 speed, 29 defense, and 32 resistance. Speed Super Boon is excellent, and 41 attack is alright to work with. Slightly more res than defense may not be great for melee brawls, but Lapis can use her speed to mitigate taking damage. For old skills, Lapis comes with Lunaster Special. Speed and Defense 03 is on Thief Rickon, but Lapis has it at 4 stars. She then brings in an incredibly rare A skill in Sorcery Blade 3. If you are adjacent to a mage, you get Adaptive Damage. Not the most popular skill, plus there is a Secret Seal version I would recommend using. However, Sorcery Blade 3 is needed to get Legendary Yuri's Hexblade A skill. The only other Sorcery Blade source is Elgur, so Lapis has value if you do get her. As for Inheritable Weapon, Lapis has the Defier's Sword Plus. 14 might. Add Sword of Comet, if foe has more than 75% HP, grant plus 5 defense to the unit, inflict minus 5 defense on the foe, and if foe has defense field boss, grant the same bonus to the user's defense and inflict a penalty on the foe's debuff. Nothing new here, Defier weapons have Freya's Binding Necklace buff stealing effect, but only for defense. If the foe has plus 6 defense, you gain plus 6 defense, and the foe loses minus 6 defense to cancel out the buff in combat. As for the other stat changes, this is basically another variation of a plus 5 attack and defense weapon. Now for playstyles, Lapis is just Generations Demote Sword Master. Unfortunately, we're about to probably move into Gen 8 BST next month. We had two hero grow options though, with Host and Numero, but they have unique weapons. Base kit wise, Defire's Sword and Sorcery Blade technically work together. One cuts down defense, and if that's not enough, Lapis will just target resistance instead. I would run Sorcery Blade as a Sacred Seal, or better yet, get Attack and Speed Hexblade from more positioning freedom. If you're sticking together, Speed and Demon's Oath with Bonds or Forms can work for stab boosting. As a faster unit though, Lapis would like no follow-up. She does not want to get hit twice, and wants to double herself. The new no follow-up 4 skills are great because they cut percent damage reduction skills in half. However, if you run that, then it sort of makes Arcane Devourer partially wasted, and Lapis is prime Arcane Devourer material. Slaying, cooldown reduction, 40% DR for one hit, and full no follow up if you outspeed. That is the best Lapis can get, and it opens up all the fun Vital Astra and Gothic Reflex builds. On the newest banners, we have all the best Swordmaster options Tekken Speed Finish 4, Spurn 4, Times Pulse 4, Male Lear has Repel 4 for free if you don't care about him. Personally, I still think a future Velocity 4 would be the best for no guard, but until then, we have the tier 3. If you want to fight everyone and use that resistance stat, Distant Attack and Speed Solo exist, and you can run other general stat boosters like Oath 4, Bonus Doubler, etc. If you don't have any arcane weaponry, Upfront Blade from Kamui isn't bad for speed builds. Generally speaking, Lapis will not be beating out all the other god tier 5 star swordmaster type units, but she'll do just fine if you want a merge project. The hardest part will actually be getting those copies. Next up is Citrine, who is a green infantry mage and another retainer of Alcris. Very accurate stat spread with 38 HP, 46 attack, 27 speed, 22 defense, and 44 resistance. Attack Super Boon is a must. Defense Super Boon also exists if you want it. Citrine will tie Summer Ivy for highest attack mage in the game. With 44 res, Iceberg will hit it very hard, and Citrine will spam it with Special Sprout 4. You then have Attack and Res Oath 4 for all the extra attack and res with bonus warping as well. Extremely high attack mage, special spiral 4, we know how this ends by now. While Citrine is a nuker, she offers very fun support with her Tome of Luxuries. First off, accelerate specials and minus 2 cooldowns to start the battle means special spiral 4 is online immediately. 
At start of turn, if Citrine has more than 25% HP, she gets the player phase fall status. Additionally, after all start of turn skills trigger, Citrine grants any bonuses on herself to all allies within two spaces. This one actually does include field buffs, however you cannot pass plus one movement buffs nor pathfinder as probably for the best. Not done yet, if Citrine has more than 25% HP at start of combat, she gains plus five to all stats and deals true damage on hit equal to 15% of her res stat. Does work for AoE specials. Tome of Luxuries surprisingly is not a Thunder Tome, but it's a great weapon. Citrine has a similar personal skill as Sailing, but instead of healing in Fabe, they went for a buff sharing approach, and that's very cool. Basically, Citrine gives herself a follow up status and the warp status via Old 4. She then passes both of those to all allies in two spaces. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, it also passes on the plus six attacker miss field boss. This applies to all bonuses Citrine gets at start of turn. For example, a cavalry unit with infantry speed tactic gives no follow up to Citrine. Citrine can pass that back to the cavalry unit. A leer can give charge to Citrine, who then gives it to the whole team. You can also use this effect to extend the range of boss. As for personal combat, Citrine is deadly, she's a special power 4 abuser, instantly gain minus 3 quit on including slaying for pre-charged icebergs, she then gets 15% res as true damage, and fall up attacks are for insurance. Basically, arcane eclipse plus a buff sharing support. For playstyles, combat wise, Citrine's another Ophelia type nuking mage, pre-charges iceberg, special spell 4 for DR piercing, and you can use attack runs finish 4 to stack on more damage. Mirror and back is a decent alternative too. She can take a magical hit, but obviously Citrine wants to end the fight in one shot. To get extra burst, you could run Times Pulse to Quicken Pulse to upgrade to Glacies. Same for AoE specials, and Citrine can swap to Life and Death or Still Water for those. While Times Pulse is great, Citrine may want to keep her Oath buff. Not only do you get the warp potential, but Toma Luxury shares its buffs with Citrine's team, giving everyone Oath 4 is crazy good. And this is one of the few scenarios where an Oath Sacred Seal could work. Sadly, Speed and Demon's Oath does not exist as a seal, but when it does, Citrine can fully just buff everyone. As for follow-up status, remember it is player phase only. Personally, I would not swap off Special Sparrow 4, but if mages were to get a DR piercing special, then you could run something like Rash Assault 4 with Remote Mirror for double DR stacking, technically follow-up effects stack, and you could run Guard if you needed to actually double. Like most one-shot nukes, if you don't get a clean kill, you probably are going to die or in big trouble. I would not expect Citrine to get to her fall up attack consistently or survive a physical counter. Regardless, if you like high powered mages, then Citrine fills that role and has the benefit of being a very unique buff sharing teammate. Next up, the Prince of Brodia, Diamant. He will be a sword infantry unit, but Diamant isn't going all out on speed. 41 HP, 46 attack, 36 speed, 43 defense, and 21 resistance. He will have a speed super boon, which might be worth taking, but attack super boon is a safe bet. Defense boom, also good. As we will get into it, Demon is similar to Brave Dimitri, but is even more susceptible to mages. If he can survive though, Demon brings more firepower for retaliating. For all the skills, Bonfire is a pivotal part of Diamant's kit. Same goes for Times Pulse 4. Time Speed Bulwark is the most replaceable option, but it fits Diamant quite well. Super Obstruct is great because Diamant is a bit scary to face. What's also scary is the description for Fair Fight Blade. This weapon is something, but it also does new things we haven't seen before. First off, exercise specials for 2 quid on Bonfire. If Diamant has more than 25% HP, at start of combat, he gets plus 5 to all stats, deals true damage on hit equal to 25% defense, and reduces damage by the same amount. Let's stop there real quick. Like Brave Dimitri, Asker, and many others, Diamant has true damage and flat DR scaling off defense. Next, neutralize all percent DR effects from Diamant and foe's non-special skills. Excludes AoE specials. You can also neutralize all effects that guarantee Diamant and the foe's follow-up attacks. Stop again. Like Legendary Nana, every single hit from Diamant fully pierces percent DR skills. However, Diamant himself cannot run percent DR skills either. He cannot become Brave Dimitri in terms of tanking. That's a pretty big downside. You then have the defensive no follow-up effect, which is great, Except Diamant also stops his own free fall up skills. Brash Assault 4, Quicker Pose, do not work. This aspect ties into the last effect for the overall weapon, which is increases the speed difference for fall ups by 20 during combat. Stacks with similar skills. Diamant 
literally alters the speed rules. Normally, five or more speed gets you a double. Now, Diamond and the enemy need 25 or more speed to naturally double. Since Diamond disables all three follow-up effects, you must do the 25 or higher speed check. This is supposed to replicate Diamond's personal skill, kinda. He gets one attack, the enemy gets one attack. What might not be so fair is the other parts of the Fair Fight Blade. On the player phase, when above 25% health, Diamond gets minus one cooldown before his first attack. With slaying two cooldown bonfire, Time's Pulse brings that to one cooldown. With this effect, Diamond's one hit is bonfire that is also only stopped by scout type skills. As for the enemy phase, similar idea, Diamond gets no guard, so any attack he tanks charges bonfire, then he counters back with it. He will also heal 10 HP on hit for the damage he tanks. Overall, this weapon is ridiculous with 10 different effects, true damage, flat DR, full DR piercing on every hit, and defense and a fall up. However, Diamant himself gets no percent DR skills to combo with his flat DR, and he cannot make a follow up unless he outspeeds by 25 or more. With Fair Fight Blade, Diamant has 41 speed, an enemy needs 66 speed to double. Pretty doable by modern speedsters, but for anyone not stacking speed, that is almost impossible. Diamant is like a more aggressive Brave Dimitri, instead of reducing damage, he has extremely consistent bonfires that pierce DR skills. Every hit of Diamant should be a bonfire. Now, Swang Specials is great for finish 4 skills. Attack in Demon's Finish 4 is finally here. I talked about wanting this skill for like 4 or more builds earlier this month. 3 space activation range is generous, plus 7 attack and defense, and when a special is ready or used, you get plus 5 true damage on hit, with 7 HP healing on hit as well. Diamant will abuse this skill perfectly. Let's tie everything together now. Diamant's a high attack and defense sword unit who can fire off deer piercing bonfires basically every attack, and he changes the speed follow up rules to hopefully get a 1 hit only for both parties. On the player phase, Diamant gets a minus 1 cooldown before his attack to prime bonfire. Time's Pulse is crucial for the minus one cooldown, and I don't think you should replace it. This bonfire will get 5 true damage from finish 4, then another 25% defense as true damage on top of that. It also pierces DR skills. On the enemy phase, Diamant will tank with 25% defense as flat DR, and Bulwark adds a little extra attack debuffs. He then gets no guard, so bonfire is ready once again. This time he will heal 10 HP from Fair Fight Blade, 7 HP from Finish 4, then after combat, another 7 HP from Bulwark. If Bonfire does not kill, hopefully Fair Fight Blade stops the foe from doubling. This is where speed investment on Demont can help, but don't expect to stop the pure speed glass cannons. For the most part, I like this kit, but there are some changes you could make. Obviously for Secret Seals, more attack, more defense is good, however, maybe you want extra res or speed. Bonus doubler with team buffing could be good here. For B skills, I feel this is the slot you can experiment with the most, although Bulwark is actually pretty good for Diamond. He needs healing since he isn't reducing as much damage as others. You could run a low or maybe something like Nelsie Distrup instead. In fact, Hardy Bearing is another option I want to bring up because Diamond's main issues are A, magic damage, and then B, not getting to retaliate. Brave attacks can take Diamant down, and same for Desperation because he kinda is gambling on one-shotting with Bonfire on the counter. Additionally, Diamant must attack to get a large portion of his healing. This is where Nelsie Distrip and Distant Counter could come into play, Hardy Bearing will stop Desperation effects. These are slightly awkward skills to build around since Diamant wants more stats for like any other unit. Kind of relevant, but Amir with her Miracle Field could be a good pairing to shore up Diamant's mage weakness, simulate a bit of Emblem Roy. If there ever was an anti-brave effect, then I would also consider that. Again, Diamant is not going to be as tanky as Brave Dimitri or others. He literally cannot combo flat DR with percent DR outside of defensive special. Now that I bring it up though, I am extremely curious how Diamant would function with a defensive special. Probably not worth it, but I'm, I'm interested. As for flat damage reduction, it only goes so far, and Diamant is depending on healing for long-term usage. Units like Saline or Legend of Guinevere could help him out there. In exchange for less tanky potential, Diamant brings the pain. If you don't think Diamant needs a 3 quadrant special, you could drop Time's Pulse for something else while running 2 quadrant specials. Maybe this opens up space for a speed skill, or just stack on more attack and defense. Honestly, more res skills could be worth trying as well. Diamant comes with a very functional kit, but you could take him in a couple different directions. I love his unique mechanics, 
even if they are going to put him at a disadvantage sometimes. Our third unit of the banner is Rearmed Alchrist. He is a colors archer and for stats, Alchrist has 39 HP, 43 attack, 46 speed, 30 defense, and 24 resistance. Attack and rest super boons are nice. Alchrist doesn't have the highest offensive stats, but this is a perfectly good spread with a little bit of bulk. Ironically, Alchrist should not be getting hit anyway. He is the fastest infantry archer though, so definitely watch out. For old skills, Deadeye is back again for archers. An interesting choice though is Defense Marine Smoke 3, Debos and Pathfinder. I wouldn't say Alchrist fully utilizes Pathfinder, but he can make it work. Diamond has the scariest weapon description in this group, so it's pretty simple from here on out. Alchrist brings the second arcane bow, the arcane dark bow. Excite specials, and if unit has 125% HP, grant plus 6 attack and speed. Neutralize all stat debuffs, grant offense in a fall up, and if unit initiates, grant full HP desperation. Arcane dark bow is the speed initiation option compared to Rearm Tana's arcane nashtron. It is quite simple. If you initiate and outspeed, you get to double immediately from full HP. Alchrist has okay defense, but ideally should not be getting touched with this weapon. Fair's unique B skill, get behind me. If Alchris initiates or is within two spaces of an ally, he inflicts minus five speed and defense on the foe, inflicts extra to defense devils equal to 30% of the foe's defense, and grants no guard. The name of this skill is Alchris's personal skill, but that's tough to translate into Fey. Instead, this takes the Luna skill from Alchris's unique sniper class. In Fey, it basically gives Alchris Moonbow on every shot. It's not true damage like, say, Brave Erica, but this is applied as a defense debuff. This is good because low defense on the enemy means more base damage for Alchrist and in turn Deadeye scales and deals more damage. You then have no guard to always charge special. With some cooldown reduction, Alchrist can get to Deadeye very easily. This is why Alchrist also introduces Flash Sparrow to the game. This inheritable A skill states if you initiate grant plus 7 attack and speed and if you have more speed than the enemy grant special cooldown charge plus 1 per attack during combat. Flash Sparrow is unfortunately locked to Flashing Blade inheritance restrictions, meaning still cannot be used by Cavaliers or Flyers. That is a shame, because all it takes to inherit is Swift Sparrow 2 or Flashing Blade 3. Swift Sparrow 2 is super easy to get. Unlike Flashing Blade 4, you actually get a 5 speed advantage for the speed check. Instead of plus 5 true damage on hit, you get plus 7 tech and speed. In any scenario where you deal actual base damage, this is a pure buff. Flashing Blade 4 has its uses, but Flash Sparrow is an exciting new option because instead of Blade type cooldown, it actually is now player phase breath type cooldown. This means you get minus 2 cooldown when the enemy hits you as well. For the higher cooldown specials like Lethality, Flash Sparrow gives 4 cooldown charges in 2 actions, meaning assuming one of those actions is taking a counter from the enemy, your follow up attack can proc Lethality. This does take the spot of Remote Sparrow and other skills, but speedy units who can tank a hit might really like this skill. Funny enough, Alchris does not really utilize that benefit of Flash Sparrow. With Arcane Dark Bow, his playstyle is extremely simple. Initiate, outspeed, follow up with Desperation. Flash Sparrow plus no guard grants minus two cooldown even into guard effects. This will charge dead on hit number one, hit number two procs dead eye. Get behind me, meanwhile, inflicts huge defense debuffs, which improve dead eye damage. After combat, Defense Red Smoke 3 applies debuffs and Pathfinder for Alchrist. He doesn't really move backwards or anything, but he provides that extra mobility to follow up if you can. Run your favorite Titan Speed Sacred Seal, that's basically it. While this base kit is great, I would argue it's not the only option. For example, Times Pulse is good, with Times Pulse and No Guard plus Arcane Dark Bow, this is essentially the exact playstyle Mythic Euler has. You double tap uninterrupted, Deadeye procs in the second shot, any infantry archer can become Euler if you run Temple in that B slot. At this point, we don't need Flash Sparrow, and Attack and Speed Finish 4 is a great replacement. If you want to run an Alchris team with his retainers, like Lapis, you could opt for Hexblade. Citrine is the mage to proc Hexblade, and she can give Oath Warping as well. This actually circles back to the situation with Lapis and her base kit. Get behind me in inflicts defense debuffs, but adaptive damage would just target res if it's lower. This means higher base damage, which is higher deadeye damage scaling no matter which stat is targeted. Not a common game plan approach, but it works. Now moving on, Alchris isn't really a mixed phase archer, Flash Sparrow is player phase only, and Dark Bow only grants bonus attack and speed. 
I would argue with his stats, he could run Tana's Arcane Nastron. However, I don't think he can run a Nastron with Get Behind Me, so I would not recommend doing this. If you really wanted that weapon, you could make it work with, say, Physical Nafal or Tempo. There are defensive bolts to could work with that B skill as well, but I would use Alchris for player phase initiations. With that said, nothing stopping you from using White Cap Bow with Get Behind Me. Flash with, or with Flash Sparrow and Times Pulse, you could proc Deadeye with the Brave Hits. Overall, Rearmed Alchris is a relatively simple offensive archer, player phase focus with consistent Deadeye, and safety to follow up. Our last banner unit is Rearmed Aider. Basically, everything from the Tempest Trials is carried over, which means inheritable arcane beast weapons are now a thing. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but Aider refers to a ruler of nothingness. I don't think that I revealed who that character is so far. Well, if you go to the Meet the Heroes website, Sharana kind of spoils that name. Thought that was kind of funny. Now as a unit, Aider is a Blue Beast Cavalier with 40 HP, 44 attack, 46 speed, 33 defense, and 16 res. Like our Lance Cavs, Aider completely sacrifices resistance, which I'm not sure is actually that good for her. However, it does mean better physical matchups. She even has a defense super boon. In terms of speed, Nerthuz is faster, but Aider has more attack. She does have a speed super boon, which I would recommend trying to get. For old skills, we have Luna and Alarm Attack and Speed. They are just spamming the Alarm skill line now. Aider does have part of the Alarm condition in her kit, so she does need to be slightly solo when fighting. Now, the time has come to fully discuss Arcane Nihility. Accelerated specials, and if unit is above 25% HP, grant plus 5 to all stats, grant plus X to all stats, inflict minus X to the foe's stats, grant true damage on hit equal to 15% speed, and finally, if you outspeed the enemy, you get full no follow up effects. The X value is equal to the current bonus on the foe's stats, calculated independently. Once again, this is Freya's binding necklace in a weapon. Unlike the Defire weapons, this targets all four stats for buffs to steal. Overall, speed stacking weapon, decent amount of stats, and full no follow up is fantastic for beast units. Okay. Big new addition to the game, Beast Cavaliers get a new transformation bonus. To transform is the same, but now, when they're in beast mode, these calves inflict attack and demons debuffs equal to the number of spaces from start to end by whoever initiates combat, plus 3. This maxes out at 3 spaces moved for minus 6 attack and defense. This is the clash condition. Now if the initiator moves 2 or more spaces, you also get 30% damage reduction for 1 hit. Compared to the old effect, higher attack and demons debuff potential, and it's tied to the clash condition. Instead of follow-up denial, you get damage reduction. The new effect can also work on both phases, while the old one was player phase only. When beast infantry got new transformation effects, we did not have any beast refines. Once they did though, the refines came with the new effect. For beast calves who did get refines already, they now have two refine options in their weapon refinery. One has the old impact effect, the other has the new effect, same as Arcane Nihility. Having a choice is good because Fall of Denial is strict, not strictly worse than 30% DR, getting hit twice might be worse than one time damage reduction. Unfortunately, if you want the new effect and he already gave refines to the affected units here, you must spend another 200 Divine Dew to get the new one. That is lame. Now. I did take a quick look at all the units here. The ones who absolutely want this upgrade are New Year's Leith and Selkie. Reason 1, they are fast units who have full no follow-up effects. This means if they outspeed, defense and no follow-up already protects them from getting doubled. Reason number 2, both units have percent DR in their weapon, so we can stack damage reduction effects. If you are refining any of these units for the first time, please double check you have the correct transformation bonus you want. Coming back to Arcane Nihility, you could give this weapon to one of those Beast Cavaliers. It is indeed Beast Cavs only. The reason we have a double rearmed banner is probably because Aider by herself is kinda iffy. Including herself, there are only 17 Beast Cavaliers in the whole game. We have way more Sword, Lance, Axe, etc. users. In addition, all Beast units have unique weapons already. Arcane Nihility could be a nice addition for units who have a support refine like Kaden. If you just want, this is pure combat power. Like we mentioned with New Year's Leith and Selki, Arcane Nihility has full no follow up. This makes it ideal for the 30% one time dare effect. You do need to focus speed, but that generally is fine for Beast Cows. 
To make Aider stand out, she has Power of Nihility as a unique A skill. If she is next to one or less allies, Aider gets plus 9 to all stats, breath type cooldown reduction, and basically surges max percent HP healing. If you were to use a special in combat, restore X percent max HP, X is equal to max special value times 20 plus 10, a 2 cooldown Luna is going to heal Aider for 50% health. She can charge Luna in one hit or two actions into guard. Unlike Search Sparrow though, this effect works on both phases, that is pretty good. Now we are not done yet, because Aider has a new Beast skill. Beast Sense 4 essentially is a tier 4 dodge B skill. Inflict minus 4 speed demons on the foe. Has a phantom speed effect for 7 extra speed in comparisons only. It then grants dodge damage reduction, but instead of the new 50%, it's only the standard 40% DR. To fit Beast units, the skill also removes the condition to transform, aka perma transformation. Unlike dodge B skills, Beast Sense is inheritable by Cavalry and Flying Beast. Sadly, that 14 base speed Fallen Edelgard will not be able to run this skill. Now, Beast Sense 4 really is just a dodge 4 skill with slightly less DR. It is extremely good with Arcane Nihility because we can stack damage reduction for one hit and the weapon already focuses on speed anyway. However, because it's a tier 4 skill out of the gate, you cannot pass Arcane Nihility and Beast Sense 4 all in one go. That sucks. Is B Sense 3 good enough to take? Uh, well, you lose the debuffs, you lose Phantom Speed, and you only get 30% DR instead of 40. Not unusable, definitely feels bad. Overall, Aider has a very cohesive kit. She can get plus 14 to all stats, steal any field buffs the enemy brings, and she has Alarm Attack and Speed for basically another 9 Attack and Speed. Aider must be solo or next to only one ally for Power of Nihility. In combat, she always transforms thanks to Beast Sense. This gives her 30% DR for one hit, and 40% dodge can bring that to 58% damage reduction for one hit. Aider wants to stack speed for her true damage and dodge, and outspeeding gives full enough follow up effects. In a single action, she charges Luna so she can proc it easily. If Aider survives and procs Luna, she heals 50% max HP. After initiations, she also has Kanto 1. Deceptively hard to take down unit, although guys like Diamant love abusing percent DR abusers. Citrine will just laugh at Aider and her 16 base res. Like a sword master type unit, if you cannot deal with damage reduction, Aider is going to be very annoying. Luckily, she cannot run distant counter. In terms of other skills, I don't feel there's a better beast skill option. You could run beast near trace for better Kanto. If there was a no guard option, that could be fun. Aider doesn't really want to run a low since she takes buffs anyway. For C skills, you could swap to Attack and Speed Menace or Smoke Debuff. However, Alarm, Attack and Speed is a lot of extra stats, also pretty easy to use. Same for the Sacred Seal slot. Attack and Speed Solo is great, Catch skills can work too. If anything, maybe slot and Guard here. Damage reduction is good for tanking basic attacks, but specials could burst through. Speaking of specials, Luna is excellent, although you could go for Moonbow if you think Guard or No Special Charge is too prevalent. Aether is kind of necessary since Aether already has Surge's healing. You could run Gale Force decently well, but that's not going to heal Aether at all. Generally speaking, Aether is going to be extremely fast and can charge specials quickly while healing any chip damage she takes. Best bet to hit her is from range or pierce her damage reduction stacking. You could also target her very low base resistance. Still not finished. I wanted to briefly touch on male Elir. He is almost exactly like his female counterpart, but maybe you are a new fair player, or you just didn't pay attention six months ago since female Elir had to be summoned for. If you want to summon for more Elir copies, or male Elir copies, he will be on this month's Mythic Banner. While technically not a new Swordmaster, Elir fills that role. He has 40 HP, 44 attack, 45 speed, 33 defense, and 25 res. Compared to female Alir, male Alir has one more attack and defense in exchange for one less speed and res. He still has a speed super bone though, so he's gonna focus on speed anyway. For old skills, Alir has Draconic Aura, attack and speed ideal 4, repel 4, and green feud 3. If you really don't care for the guy, this is some excellent fun fodder for free. Now, male Alir's Liberation, same as his counterpart, makes her his specials. At the start of turn, if unit has 125% HP, grant charge to Alir and his support partner within 3 spaces. If Alir has 125% HP at the start of combat, he gets plus 5 to all stats, inflicts Speed and Demons debuffs, and gets 40% dodge damage reduction. The Speed and Demons debuffs equate to number of allies within 3 spaces from distinct titles times 4 plus 4. 
player needs two allies from different games for the max minus 12 speed and defense on the enemy. Now Alir does not need a support to gain charge for himself, but it's a nice addition to move three spaces in a line. As mentioned, you can give charge to Citrine, and she can hand it out to all other teammates nearby. Three movement is fun, but don't go too far from allies. Alir needs nearby allies to proc his debuffs, and those are some hefty penalties, especially if you want to dodge stack. For builds, Mel Alir has attack and speed ideal 4 and dodge for B skill like his counterpart. Ideal should be active due to charge, and you got 40% dodge stacking with 50% dodge. Green feud counters green foes or supports, but you can replace it. Times Pulse is a common pick, especially since that means pre-charge Vital Astra, which is another dodge dare to stack. Attack and Speed Finish 4 is generally the best A skill for this type of setup. Switch to Sprout 4 could also work in the build if you wanted to run Luna to pierce damage reduction. Now, since six months ago, we have gotten a spicy new B skill option with physical no follow. Alir wants no follow up. Sacred Seal is fine, but this tier 4 B skill gives half percent tier piercing on every attack. It is the more aggressive option than, say, Repel. But if you have Vital Astro with Times Pulse, it partially will replace the lost dodge effect. Alir still gets his damage reduction, and you now pierce DR partially on every attack. Other new options include Distant Attack and Speed Solo for Distant Counter, Attack and Speed Hexblade is fun, you then have classics like Attack and Speed Menace, Speed Smoke 4, maybe Velocity for Null Guard. You could run Godlike Reflexes, but Alir needs cooldown reduction for that. Gale Force is another fine special. Similar to Aether, Alir relies on Percent DR for surviving. Diamant and Citrine do not care about at that at all. Godlike Reflexes could help in those situations, but I feel like Alir is more of a vital astro type user, especially with charges extra movement. I think physical and follow up fits that aggressive playstyle decently well. Finally, we are done, except the excitement does not stop with these six new heroes. Up next, we have a Grand Hero Battle for Zephyr. Not only is she a rare free flying mage, but she has a unique tome and an extremely valuable fodder skill on hand. Gonna be a tough decision whether to use her or fodder her. We'll talk about her more next time. Now let me know your thoughts on this double rearmed banner and the second batch of new engaged characters minus Ivy who jumped the gun a little bit. Personally, I was saving arms to try and plus 10 summer in Lava show and maybe get more Ephraims. Well, that plan is now thrown out the window. Time to throw everything at red, hope for a Lapis and Diamond, then spark Alchrist. I do want Citrine as well. Not that I was planning to have much orbs going into COL7, but that stash is even further behind now. Thank you for watching this very long breakdown. Good luck on your summons. See you in the next video.